Science Developer Conference season! GitHub Universe announcements, plus the latest open source AI models, some retro gaming fun, including the best emulator on iOS. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub, and this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. I am running low on cool shirts, so if you've seen anything, you know, that's like cool or nerdy or, you know, tech related, or if it's just good streetwear, please let me know in the comments. Um, as it stands, this is from GitHub Universe 2023, which is actually perfect segue to get into the news. So it is fully spring, and that means that we are about to enter the heart of developer conference season, which is my favorite season after fall. Um, but the first thing I want to uh, share is the GitHub Universe 2024 has been announced. It's going to be taking place on October 29th and 30th at the Fort Mason Center for the Arts and Culture in San Francisco. You can also join us virtually from anywhere in the world. And this is a big one because this is actually the 10th anniversary of GitHub Universe, so we're going to go all out. The space where we're having Universe is massive. Um, there are five stages, there are going to be over 100 sessions, and this is going to be our biggest Universe yet. Tickets go on sale now, and they are 35% off uh, through July 8th. Um, I've got a link down below for more details. I'm going to be there and would love to see you there as well. And speaking of that, although we have a lot of great content already planned for GitHub Universe, we want your ideas too. So until May 10th, we are accepting calls for sessions. And our main content tracks this year are AI, security, and developer experience. And then we have a number of different panel types. And so if you want to submit a session, check out the link in the description down below for all the details and examples. Again, we'd love to see you there. OK, so GitHub Universe is in October. But what if you're looking for something a little more immediate? Well, Microsoft Build is just a month or so away. It's going to be taking place in Seattle and online from May 21st through the 24th. And if you tune in online, you might see my smiling face. But if you are in person and you see me, please be sure to say hello. Uh, AI is obviously going to be a huge part of Microsoft Build this year. And we've got some uh, great GitHub Copilot sessions planned, too. Details of Microsoft Build uh, are also in the links in the description down below. All right. So I know what you're saying. This is great if you live on the West Coast of the United States, but you know, what about the rest of the world? Well, I'm excited to tell you about Merge, which is a developer experience conference that is taking place in Berlin, uh, June 13th and 14th. And there are tons of great speakers and sessions planned, including one from our own uh, COO, Kyle Daigle. But what's really cool is that GitHub is hosting an open source fair for Merge, and we'll be having space for about 24 projects to showcase. And you can submit your own at gh.io slash osa dash merge dash 2024. Don't worry, I've got that linked down below too. Uh, I will not be in Berlin, sadly. Uh, I'm super jealous of everybody who will be there. OK, enough about conferences for now. Let's talk about AI models. Open AI models. Wait, wait, not open AI models. But let me rephrase that. AI models that are more openly accessible. So there were two big things that have happened in the last few weeks. First, Mistral AI has released its latest large model, Mistral, um, and it's, it's an 8 by 22 billions model. And this model features a 65,000 token context window and a parameter size of up to 176 billion parameters. The performance results look really impressive, especially compared to other open models. And, and although you can use it on Mistral's platform, La Platform, uh, you can also use it on Hugging Face, and you can even download the model yourself from a magnet link that Mistral has helpfully made available online. Just a warning, the full model is like 250 gigabytes or so. So, you know, plan your download time accordingly. OK, alongside the model, Mistral also released a new set of tools called Mistral Common for help working with Mistral and, and Mistral models. And this is basically a tokenizer, and it's available on GitHub. Um, the really noteworthy thing here about the Mistral 8 by 22 b is um, this released under the Apache 2 license, which is very permissive and thus available to basically any individual or corporation who wants to use it. And I think that that's awesome. So I've got links for all that stuff down below. And speaking of AI models, Meta announced Llama 3, the next version of its foundational large language model. Now, there are going to be three Llama 3 models, and two of them are available now. And then a larger multimodal version will be available in a few months. Now, as we've talked about before, Llama isn't really 
open source in the same way that something like the, the new Mixtral uh, model is. However, the model weights are still openly accessible, um, but there are some caveats for how you can use these models. So if you happen to have like 700 million users and are called Snapchat, However, you can download the models or play with them on Hugging Face. Uh, and Meta also has a really fantastic GitHub repo that I've linked below called Llama Recipes for Playing Around. And, and this has been integrated in bunches of other projects. And the performance um, Meta is promising with Llama 3 is very impressive. Uh, the two variants that are available now, there's an 8 billion and a 70 billion parameter um, models show some really great improvements over Llama 2. I should note that, that Llama 2 was only released back in September, so this is exciting. Uh, it is exciting times all around, and I've got links to all that stuff in the description down below. Okay, moving into some retro game news, I wanna quickly talk about my GitHub project, Spotlight. And this is where I highlight a great project on GitHub, and this time, it is the source code of a first-person shooter that was released all the way back in 1999 called Descent 3. Now, according to Wikipedia, the game takes place in a science fiction setting of the solar system where the player is cast as a material defender, a mercenary who must help an organization known as the Radicropolis Research Team to stop robots infected by an alien virus. I never played this game, I'm gonna be honest with you. I do vaguely remember the box art, but the reason that I'm making this my project spotlight is that develop, one of the developers of the game, Kevin Bentley, who'd previously released some patches for the game, has obtained permission from his old boss at Outrage Entertainment, which was the studio behind Descent 3, and he's put the code on GitHub. And even better, Kevin is working alongside members of the community to get the game to compile again on modern build systems. And in just the first few days of its release, there's already been a lot of interest and some progress. So Kevin does note on the GitHub repo that the current short-term roadmap is code cleanup and build verification. There is also a Discord where a lot of discussions are taking place, and I really love seeing stuff like this, and I really appreciate the effort of Kevin, his former colleagues, and the community for preserving uh, games like this, and, and even better, making it open source. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay. So a new Taylor Swift album is out, and that is the obvious choice, but I decided to be a little bit different this time. But still, please stream the Tortured Poets Department so that my queen can be even more powerful and successful. No, but like for real, my actual pick this week um, is also related to retro gaming, and it is the iOS game emulator Delta. And it's basically designed for non-jailbroken iPhones, and it can play games from classic systems like the NES, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and the Nintendo DS. And Delta is the project from Riley Testet, an absolutely amazingly talented developer who started working on the predecessor to Delta, GBA for iOS, 10 years ago when he and his friend Paul were still in high school. For a lot of reasons that we don't have time to get into, Officially distributing Delta in the App Store hasn't been possible, so Riley actually created an alternate method of helping people sideload it uh, called Alt Store. And now that the EU has required Apple to support third-party app stores, Riley has actually launched a new Alt Store for EU um, users appropriately titled Alt Store Pal. But a fun side effect of the EU regulation is that Apple has just magically changed its long-standing policy on allowing emulators in the App Store. And as a result, Delta is now available in the official Apple App Store in the US and other regions for everybody. And this is a fantastic project. It is free, it's open source on GitHub, and I've been watching this saga as a fan and an online pal of Riley's literally for 10 years. And I'm so excited that more people will have a way to play Earthbound on their phone as God, maybe not Steve Jobs, but as God intended. Uh, I've got a link to the App Store page and the GitHub repo down below. Congratulations, Riley, this is awesome. That's gonna do it for me. Let me know your favorite games to emulate uh, on your phones uh, in the comments or your thoughts on any of our other stories. And if you like this episode, give us a like on YouTube because it does help the algorithm out and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.